So I've been animating with Clip Studio Paint for like five years. I don't know how many hours I've spent over the years on drawing after drawing, project after project, year after year. But when you spend so much time in a program, you get real comfortable experimenting with different tools, shortcuts, and techniques. I looked at the Clip Studio Paint animation tutorials and I was like, <laughs> let me get a crack at it and make my own amazing Clip Studio Paint animation tutorial half hour special. <laughs> Before I get into everything, I'm going to be explaining things with the assumption that you're comfortable with the basics of Clip Studio Paint. And if you aren't, I don't care. Just watch my video, I swear to god. Clip Studio Paint EX has more functions for comics and animation. So if you only have Clip Studio Paint Pro, you'll only be able to animate 24 frames. Alright! Let's fucking go! File, new, animation. Yeah, you. I think you know the drill. I think you and I know the drill very well. These presets are the standard, you know, 720p, 1080p. With these presets, the extra space outside the blue outline isn't included when you export the video for animation. It's just to give you extra room for notes and elements outside the scene. Personally, I have my blank space off just because if I have notes, I'll keep them in the animatic and I rarely write notes on my final animation. Also, sometimes I animate on a canvas that's 4x3 just because I think it's cozier. The only other thing I mess with on here is the frame rate, which I change depending on what I'm working on. And you can also change it while you're animating if you go to animation, timeline, and change frame rate. The animation interface works differently than any other animation programs, which is what I think turns most people away from animating in Clip Studio, but... For some ungodly reason, if you have ever been forced to animate in Photoshop at some point, then you're gonna be a superstar because animating in Clip Studio Paint is similar. Alright, so in most animation programs, you arrange the frames like this, and then you put these into layers and they'll have a different stacking order so you can put different things on top of each other. Clip Studio Paint is the same, but frames are called layers and layers are called folders. I know that's kind of confusing, so let's just look at one of my animation files. So like an illustration file, I have my line art above the color. All my line art drawings are in this folder, and the colors for the corresponding art are arranged in the folder below. Usually people merge their line art and color, but I keep them separate to make it easier to go back and fix minor things, even if it means I have more layers to manage. Speaking of merging layers, it isn't as simple as in an illustration file since although they are arranged above each other in the timeline, they are in separate folders in the layers panel. So if I want to merge two different layers, I just drag them both out of their respective folders, and then I merge whatever I want to merge, and then I drag them back into the folder that I want them to be in. When you merge two layers, the one on the bottom is the one that keeps the name, so when you put it back in the folder, make sure that the name is the one that corresponds with the one on the timeline. If it's not, then you just right click the timeline and reselect it. I use this a lot since when I'm animating, I'll often want to copy specific elements onto different frames. And when Clip Studio Paint pastes elements, it pastes them onto new layers. Since animation frames are just layers, that means that they have the same properties that they would in an illustration file. You can add different blending modes and layer properties. On the timeline, you can select multiple at once and drag them around to change the timing. When you right click, you're able to choose any frame in the current folder that you want to appear at that moment. So if you want to reuse a drawing from earlier, that's cool. But if you edit one instance of it, all the others will change as well. If you want to copy a layer, it's the same Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and then you just add the newly pasted frame to the timeline. When you're copying, pasting, and rearranging a lot of frames, make sure to keep the frame names in check since they're automatically named and it can get really messy. Like look at my recent files, and then look at this old one. <sighs> But what if you're like, I want to play this sequence three times. When you're copying and pasting a sequence of frames, Ctrl C and Ctrl V won't work, since that'll just copy and paste the current layer. If you want to copy a sequence of frames, you select them, right click, copy, right click, paste. Got it. Wow. So see, this sequence of frames repeats, but the layers themselves aren't copied. Only their instance on the timeline is copied. You gotta know, in Clip Studio Paint, the Layers panel is like a collection of drawings, and the timeline is where you decide when they're on screen and for how long. I think once you fiddle with it enough and understand that, you are amazing. Ah. 
For this part, I'll just show you all the functions and tools for animation that I use a lot. So, you know, the onion skin, classic. Everybody loves the onion skin, come on. Uh, you turn it on and it shows the frame before and after so you can try the in-between. Everybody knows the onion skin, come on, it's a classic actually. If you go to animation, show animation cells and onion skin settings, you can actually change the color of the onion skin, how many frames ahead and behind it will show, and the opacity change from frame to frame. <sighs> For adding audio, I'm gonna tell you a little story. And if you don't want to hear the story, well, that really sucks for you, cause it's my Clip Studio Paint Animation Tutorial Half Hour Special, and I get to tell my story. So in 2018, Clip Studio Paint added the ability to import audio for animation. Up to that point, I'd really just been animating little GIFs and animations with no audio. So you know, I was really excited to make all these cool new animations with audio. And like any other bastard online, I go to YouTube to MP3 and download a bunch of music I like and start animating and whatever. But the audio... was kinda fucked. The playback was only in sync with the animation if I played it from the very beginning. It would play out of sync if I played it from anywhere else on the timeline. And it wouldn't export unless I deleted the audio, meaning I'd have to export the animation and then go into Windows Movie Maker and re-add the audio. Until last year, when I accidentally discovered the solution. Use WAV files, not MP3s. When you animate with audio in Clip Studio Paint, WAV files will always play in sync with what you're animating, and they export perfectly. I think it's a big secret, since there's nothing I could find about this for years in video tutorials, instruction manuals, question forums on Reddit and the Clip Studio Paint website. Maybe it's a big secret, and everyone that was keeping it from me will come out when I post this video and they'll go, Oh Derek, you found out about the little secret we were keeping from you for years. And I'll go, <laughs> Oh you guys, you're so silly! You guys are so silly, huh? Yeah. Alright, yeah, just use WAV files. Just import the audio, and then I usually keep it above all the art and lock it to avoid accidentally moving it. You can move it around in the timeline, but I mean, if you edited your audio prior to importing, then you won't really need to. These blue bars let you change which frames are currently editable on the timeline, which is useful for lip sync since you can zone in on the audio that you're currently syncing and watch the playback over and over to see the mouths line up. They're also just useful for honing in on one sequence and turning on looping to see if the movement flows as it plays in real time. And with playback, if you have an older computer and a lot of different folders and moving elements, the playback of your animation might get a little laggy or slow. But if you go to Animation, Playback Settings, and Prefer Speed, this will tell Clip Studio to prefer playing back the animation at a speed closer to what the exported video will look like, rather than showing each frame in high quality. But also, if I'm just focused on seeing how different frames flow into each other, I spend time scrubbing with this red highlight to control the view of the frames and to see if different poses and drawings flow into one another. Alright, tweens are really useful, but they work differently than any other animation program I've used. So let's say I just want to have this guy slide over here. You know, pretty simple little slide. I enable keyframes on this layer, make a keyframe for where I want him to start, go to where I want him to end, and then I use the operation tool to slide him to where I want him to be at that moment. So there are three types of keyframes you can add with this little button right here. Hold interpolation doesn't make any new frames in between keyframes. Linear interpolation makes a linear transition between keyframes, and smooth interpolation eases in and out of different keyframes. You can edit the speed of movements by clicking on this graph and adjusting these curves. Tweens are crazy, you know, you can change the position, rotate, scale, and the opacity. You can edit these properties in the window here when you have the operation tool selected, or you can grab layers with the operation tool and edit them how you like. You can do some crazy stuff with tweens and all, I've only showed you the bare minimum just because I don't really use them a lot. But I actually lied to you, I'm actually using tweens as we speak right now as I'm talking. Look, look at me. Since I animate with my line art and color in separate layers, if I want to tween a character, I merge the line art and color into one layer and put them in a separate folder to tween them, instead of tweening the line art and color separately. Tweens move and transition layers however you transform them, and when you enable keyframes on a folder, you're unable to edit the layers inside the folder to fix things. So if I want to use tweens in an animation, I usually plan to do them near the completion of a project. But you can always just turn keyframes off, do whatever, and then turn them back on. The camera tool works very similar to tweening. 
right click, new animation layer, 2D camera folder, and then you just make keyframes and tweens with the operation tool. Keyframes like this work the same in camera folders and tweening folders. <laughs> Excuse me? You know what? Just for shards and giggles, I will tell you the custom shortcuts that I have for animation. I only have four shortcuts that are specific for animation. The first two are less than and greater than for back a frame and forward a frame. I use this all the time, it's really useful for flipping through frames to see how they follow one another. Also, okay, when you're watching a YouTube video, most people know that the J, K, and L keys are for going back and forward 10 seconds and pausing. But a lesser known control for YouTube videos is that less than and greater than move forward and backwards one frame when the video is paused. This is useful for analyzing cool animation and seeing how they work frame by frame. The other two animation shortcuts I have are O for toggling the onion skin and N to play the animation. Since I have a 60% keyboard, all these keys are conveniently in the same area for me, so you should customize your shortcuts to suit your needs. Alright, when I'm drawing or when I'm animating and I move on to the line art after the sketch or animatic, I lower the opacity and go to a new layer, you know. I'm just like you guys, I put my socks on one sock at a time, I'm like a regular, honest guy, I'm on- But, I also press change layer color. I just do this because it helps me differentiate what's line art and what's sketch, and it helps me focus on the lines I'm drawing rather than just following my sketch. By default, it changes it to blue, but you can change it to whatever you want. Speaking of changing line color, I have the F key set to convert to drawing color. My process for colored line work is that I'll have my line work, and then I'll lasso the lines that I want to be a specific color, pick the color, and then just press F. This is also just a really useful shortcut that I use when I want to see how different colors look. The other two custom shortcuts I have are Ctrl G for toggling the grid and Ctrl F for flipping the canvas. The grid I just kind of use whenever, and having Ctrl F as flipping the canvas is just really convenient for quickly flipping the canvas to check for symmetry. The last shortcut I'll talk about is something that's actually default in Clip Studio Paint. C. When you press X, it switches between your main color and your subcolor, but when you press C, it switches from color to transparency. If I'm doing line art with a textured pen or brush, if I erase with the regular eraser tool, it often won't match the rest of the line. If you erase with C, you maintain the texture of the line by using an eraser that's the exact same size and shape as the pen you're using. This works with pens, brushes, and whatever. When I'm doing line art, I'm constantly switching between color and transparency. I learned this trick a few years ago from watching Casey Green's process video, which I really recommend watching if you make comics in Clip Studio. Well, that's all I gotta teach you this time. <laughs> when I first got Clip Studio Paint, tutorials online were a lot harder to find, and I'd often have to look up Manga Studio just to find specific tutorials. But I'm happy that since then the community has grown and the program has become more widespread and accessible for other people. If you want to learn more Clip Studio, just look up a better tutorial or go to their Twitter because they're always posting a lot of cool tutorial videos. I'm almost done editing the video and I'm watching it again and I'm like, wow, I'm not really good at explaining things, huh? I did not really explain a lot of this well, huh? I kind of only made this video to tell you to use WAV files and to press the C key. Oh my god, that's my character arc for the whole video, was that I shouldn't make tutorial videos and I should just make animations. And I have some cool animations in the works for the rest of the year, so you know, yeah, you know, subscribe to my thing and yeah, yeah ring the little bell, <laughs> ring the- <laughs>